Hey, I'm not looking back. I am not going back. The call that I serve is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask to give you. Shout to the Lord, O ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing and thanksgiving. O oh God, we come to you this morning thanking you, God, for being our Lord, for being our Savior, God. God, we come this morning, God, thanking you just for who you are, God, for your goodness, God, for your mercy, God. God, we just glorify your name, God, in this place today, God. We thank you for who you are, God. God, you take control of this service right now, God. We welcome you in here, God, but we thank you, God, that you're already in the midst, God. God, we glorify you, God. We magnify you, God. God, we know because you're here, God, we can come to you, God, and pray, God. God, that those that don't know you, God, will come in here today, God, and be saved, God. We thank you, God. God, those that are lost, God, those that have become backslidden, God, God, that they can find their way back here, God, God, to your kingdom, God. God, we glorify you in all that we do today, God. We magnify your name, God. God, we pray for the servant that comes, God, to break the bread of life, God. God, that you will just preach the word through him, God. Holy Spirit, that you will speak to the church today, God. God, that you will get all honor, and God, that you will get all glory, God. God, we pray that our hearts, minds, and spirit, God, will be open, God, and receptive, God, to hear your word, God. God, but most importantly, God, we pray, God, that you will be magnified. God, we pray your kingdom come in this place today, God. All honor, all glory goes to you, God. We thank you. We bless you in advance. And the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name on today, God. We give your name all the glory, all of the honor, because you're here. Hallelujah. And because you're here, God, we're going to worship you. We're going to adore your name this morning, oh God. We're going to make a sound that you can come and, and that you can dwell in our midst on this morning. Oh God, we bless you. We bless you right now, God. As a believer, I lift my hand. And I open my mouth and I declare that you are God and that you are God alone and that there's nobody, nowhere who can compare to you. You are the true and living God. You are the great I am. Oh, you are a wonderful Savior this morning. And we bless your name because you're here. Hallelujah. Because you're here, we're going to worship you. Oh, dwell in our midst this morning. We need your spirit. We need your presence. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, oh God. There's nobody like you, Jesus. I lift my voice to bless you. You are a good God. Yes. And there's nobody, nowhere that can compare to our God on this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I know we came through some storms and we've come through some things this week, but our God is still on the throne. He is still the master of the universe. He is still God. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody know that he is still God on this morning? Oh, let's open up our mouths and bless him. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, we exalt you in this place this morning. Be lifted, Jesus, with all that's within me. I will bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Pray. 
Come on, if that's your declaration today, put your hands together. Come on and bless the Lord today. Hallelujah. The scripture says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Did you come to bless him? Bless the name of Jesus. We do declare that we come to praise your name today. For you are a great God. Amen. How many can say that he's a great God today? He's great, and he's greatly to be praised, and we bless him, and we worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. How many came to worship the Lord today? In the beauty of holiness, come on, can we lift our hands over the sanctuary and worship our God? Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. Come on, let him know how much you love him, how much you adore him. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Yes, we do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. seated in majesty Lord you are the risen King oh everybody say hallelujah You're the risen king, yes, 
and you're seated. Yes, you are. Seated, seated in majesty. Seated in majesty. You're the risen King. You are the risen King. Can't say death could not hold you down. Death could, could yeah. Yes, you are. You see that, see that in majesty. See that in majesty. You're the risen king. Yeah. You are the risen king. Death, oh, death could not hold you. Hold you down. You're the risen King. You are the risen King. You're the risen King. Oh. So here I am to worship. Lord, here I am to bow down. And here I am to say that. That you're my God, you're all together, you're all, all too, together, all together lovely. lovely, you're all together, all together, together word, he's all together, all together wonderful, wonderful. hey, yeah. here I am. Oh, yeah. And I'll never know just how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. I'll never know, I'll never know how much it costs. upon the cross yes God hallelujah oh so here I am here I am to worship and here I am to bow down Lord here I am here I am to say that to say you're my God hey, you're all together you're all together you're all together, all together, all together word. He's all together, all together, wonderful to me. Yeah. Come on, can we say that with one voice? Here I am to worship, Lord. Here I am to worship. Yes, here I am to bow down, and here I am to say. Here I am to say that. You're my God, you're all together, you're all together, Hallelujah, 
You're all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to Come on, just lift those hands and worship. Lift those horses, hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands. Lift those voices, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah, we worship you. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those voices here. Here I am, am to, to say that. Oh my God. Hallelujah. You're all together. All together. All together worthy. All together wonderful. Come on, tell him you're my God. Hallelujah. We love you this morning, dear Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. You're worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Oh, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you. We glorify you. There's none like you in all the earth. There's none like you, dear Lord Jesus. And Father, this morning we've entered your gates with thanksgiving. We've entered your courts with praise. We're thankful unto you. We bless your name for you are good. Your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures to all generations. What a joy it is this morning to open our mouths and praise and our hearts and worship. And to say this morning that we love you. You said in your word, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So we declare this morning that we love you because you first loved us. Hallelujah. Thank you for loving us in spite of us. Father, we come in to agree with your word this morning. You said whether well, two or three are gathered together in your name, there you've been the midst of us. And so, Father, we thank you that your presence, your power is here. Thank you for moving in the midst of us. Thank you that signs and wonders has been released into the service. We come into agreement that healing and deliverance is released into the service. For those that are sick, we come into agreement today that you said in your word that by your stripes we were healed. So we speak healing right now. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, for those who have questions, we come into agreement that answers shall come today. Father, because you're here today, we come into agreement that your body will be edified, your body will be equipped, your body will be strengthened, your body will be blessed. We come into agreement today that if there are those here that don't know you as Savior and Lord, that they will surrender their lives to you. We come into agreement today that backsliders will come back. And we come into agreement today that every person that have come through those doors and every person that shall come through and every person that are watching by the way of internet, we come into agreement today that none of us will leave the same way that we've come, but we will leave this house knowing we've been in your presence. So be glorified, be magnified, be exalted. And Father, we will take none of your glory, but we will give it all back to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let everybody agree with that prayer. Shout amen. amen. Come on, shout amen again. Shout amen one more time. Now come on, put those hands together. Lift those voices in praise. Hallelujah. Come on, just don't clap. Lift your voices. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise. How many of you know he's worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. We glorify you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's just something, there's just something about you lifting your voice. I think sometimes we just, we try to get out of just by clapping our hands. And I know the Bible says clap your hands, all you people. But there's something about your voice. When you lift your voice. When you say thank you. When you say hallelujah. Oh, something happens when you open your voice. So once again, open that voice. Give him praise. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I bless you. I praise you. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. We glorify you. We magnify you. Well, before you're seated, hug about three or four people. Love on somebody. Tell them you're glad to see them. Give them a good God bless you hug. Well, good morning. Oh, I, I said good morning. Uh, God bless you. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here this morning. All of our first time attendees, your very first time being with us, we ask that you would stand. Uh, all of our first time uh, attendees, please stand. Please stand. Please stand. God bless you. God bless you. It is so good to have you. So good to have all of you worshiping with us this morning. This is the ministry where Jesus Christ is Lord, and you're certainly loved. Thank you so much. That must be the Hardy family right there. They're all sitting together. It's so good to have all of you worshiping with us. No, don't sit down yet. Don't sit down. Because uh, you sit down, got to start all over again. You don't want me to do that. But it is such a pleasure to have you to be worshiping with us this morning. This is the ministry where Jesus Christ is Lord and the people love uh, I'd like for you to do two things for us. Number one, if you please put on the guest um, badge. If you have not received a first time visitor packet, our ushers are getting one to you. Inside that package, there is a registration card. If you would please fill out, first of all, put on the uh, sticker so we'll know who you are. Then secondly, inside that package, there's a registration card. We ask that you would fill it out completely, especially where it says address. If you would please put the city as well as the zip code that you're from. Also, where it says number, I also put the area code you, before we just could call it. So if it's 336, put 336. Put all, fill it all out completely. And when the offering buckets are passed this morning, just drop that card in the bucket. And of course, we really would appreciate it. And again, thank you so much for being part of our service this morning. You may be seated, but just for you, we want to sing a song. Welcome to Love and Faith. All the members of Love and Faith, Please stand. Please go greet those who are seated as we sing Welcome to Love and Faith.
Welcome you. We welcome you to love and faith. And again, welcome to love and faith. And let the church say, and especially those that are viewing by the way of internet, wherever you're viewing us in the world, what a pleasure it is to have you to be part of our live service. We, we get a monthly report of people that are watching, and we have people uh, this morning that are watching us from all over the world in India in Germany, in Europe, I mean, I, 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 Africa, different parts of Africa. So what a pleasure it is to have you to be part. And of course, there are different people in, in the United States of America, different um, states and cities. What a pleasure it is to have you to be part of our live service. Let me first of all thank those who share with us this week how these services are a blessing. I often say it this way, we, uh, we don't know how, uh, how we're being a blessing to you unless you will communicate that with us. So thank you so much for those of you who this week, especially through email, to let us know how these services are blessing. Of course, we try to make it very simple for you to do that, either through email, you can call us, you can write us, or you can go back to our website where it says guest book, you can sign in there. But whichever you prefer, thank you for doing that. Then secondly, thank you so much for those that are giving uh, online. Because of your giving, you help us to continue to preach this wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you so much uh, for your giving. Now, of course, if you're a member of a church, you should not tie to us. You should tie to your, your own local church. However, if you so desire, you can send an offering. And then for those who may not have anything to give, uh, thank you so much for your prayers because we do believe in the power of prayer. You can come in partnership with us through prayer. The Bible says that he affects your fervent prayer of a righteous man avail much. And let the church say... Amen. You know, um, today, of course, the second Sunday, we got a lot of things going on, but we have several of our uh, ministers who, uh, some of them had license before, and what they did is they kind of turned in their license and took on our license, and um, this morning, uh, Brother Pratt um, Bazin, please come. Uh, just uh, Let me just tell you what these things says. It says, um, cert certificate of license. This is to certify, calls the person name, who has, give, who has given evidence that God has called him or her into the gospel ministry, was licensed to preach the gospel as he or she may have opportunity to exercise his or her gifts in the work of ministry at Love and Faith Christian Fellowship, uh, of course, Greensboro, North Carolina, 9th October 2016. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Uh, God bless you. Brother uh, Abraham and Sister Frazier, Brother Abraham Frazier and Sister Carla Frazier, come on, the husband and wife team. God bless you. Uh, also, Sister Aura Hughes. Come on, Sister Aura. God bless you. I'm going to give you both of them. I know you can handle that. God bless you, Sister Aura. Uh, Sister Glenda K. Nicholson. Glenda K. Nicholson. Oh, come on, Sister Glenda K. And Sister Alma Purvis. Come on down. God bless you. God bless you. Congratulations. Wait, wait hold it, Sister Purvis. Your, your, your son won't take a picture. Yeah, Brother Purvis. So yeah, yeah, there you go. I had to stop and pause. You know, you got to do that. God bless you. Let the church say. We're very proud of what God has done and what God even is doing. Um, also, this morning we have a baby dedication. Um, uh, Noel uh, Hardy, the, the parents of Brother Anthony and DeAndre uh, Hardy Jr., come on up. And the family and friends, please come on up. We believe, uh, yeah, all the family and friends, uh, come on up and become part of this family. You know, children are a blessing. <laughs> now, the ones that say amen, they had teenagers. They couldn't say amen yet. But they are a blessing. Children are blessed. Come on up. Come on up. Now, I had, Noel, Noel and I have not talked, so we're going to see how this works. But all the family and friends come up, and um, one of the things that we do, God bless you, man. Just stand right there. Uh, we got to have some, oh, yeah. My mother, mommy said they got to have some insurance, so they bought some milk up. So, but one of the joys uh, that I get from pastoring, uh, number one, is people being saved, and secondly, from people becoming members, and whether they come through joining or they come through the family. Just this week, we had a couple of uh, mothers who had babies in our church, and so what a joy. One of the things that we do 
is we ask, um, no, please just, just kind of, yeah, come. We don't want to get one a lopsided. Come on, yeah, come, yeah, just come down. Everybody get on stage. That's why we got a big stage. One of the things that we do for you who may not know is we videotape as well as audio tape this particular dedication because what happens is as the child grows, we want to give, um, let them see. You know, all of us is going to change, hairstyle changes. And so what Noelle is going to be able to do is look on the, we're, we're videotaping this, and so she's going to look and be able to see who's up there and uh, hairstyle changes. You know, a few years ago I had hair, and now I don't have none. So anyway, we, vi we, we record these so it'd be a blessing. So when she becomes at a certain age, her parents will um, play this back, and she would see who was at her dedication. Uh, but at this time, we asked the parents. Many years ago, I went to a Jewish synagogue, and I noticed that it wasn't the rabbi that blessed the child. It was the parents that spoke over that child. And then I noticed, I went back to the Word of God, and that's exactly what the patriots did. They spoke over their children. So we asked the father and the mother to speak over their child, and of course, we come back and we pray over it. So at this time, I don't know who's going to start out. I don't know the mom or dad, which mom is going to start. Uh, the boss is going to start. Good morning, church family. Um, we are the Hardy family, and we are blessed to be here today to dedicate Noel. We joined the church about three years ago, and throughout our time here, we've been so blessed with people who have just poured into our lives. Our deacons, um, the Jeffreys, our marriage council, our premarital counselors were um, the Jim and May, and then I've made a connection with Sister Fisher just as her working in her gift, being a greeter, and so. Um, we have been so blessed with, and also Rodney and his family, we've been just so blessed with everyone who has poured into our lives. And so we're excited to have Noelle. Her birthday is October 23rd. She'll be one. And so we're giving her to the Lord today. Um, so just to start this off, I just wanted to say that Noelle is truly a blessing and she is our miracle child. Um, I had some health issues when I was pregnant with her and we lost a baby before her. Um, and so, but when God says yes, Nobody can say no. <laughs> and so I know that Noel is meant to be here. Um, and she's a strong, she's been a strong willed child since I've been pregnant with her. <laughs> But I know that God put that fight in her to fight off the enemy from trying to take her out. And so I know that she has a mighty purpose um, in her life. And so as her mother and as her parents, we pray that she will always be Noel. We want you to know that we love you. Your name means is the female version of a special birth, um, referencing the birth of Christ. But you are still a special birth as well. Um, and... We just want to know that we love, we want you to know that we love you and that as your parents, we're always going to be a godly example before you. Um, me and your dad take our marriage vows seriously, and we want you to see a godly marriage, and I want you to see in him a godly father and a godly husband, so you know what to look for. Um, in me, I want you to see a virtuous woman and to know that you can grow up to be anything and that we will Look for your spiritual gifts and your physical and natural gifts as well and help you to use those to bless the kingdom of God. Amen. We want you to be a Christian child and grow up in a Christian home and have those values. And I want you to always remember to be respectful to everyone and yourself, to honor the people who come before you, and to do things to make it better for the generation who comes after you. We want you to be a wise child so that you'll have a spirit of discernment um, and no right from wrong, but you'll also have a delightful disposition to everyone who meets you. <clears throat> we want you to be loving and kind so that you can always care about others. 
And lastly, we want you to have the other fruits of the spirit so that you will be a blessing on this earth and be able to minister and give back to God. And so we always want you to put God first in your life, no matter what. Amen. Amen. Hi, baby. Good morning, family. Um, you know, it says it takes a village to raise a child. Noel, I want you to know that you're blessed because not only do you have the village that your mother and I have behind us that helped raise us to be around to help raise you, but you also have more. You are truly a daddy's girl, <laughs> as you can see. Um, <sighs> we love you so much. As your mom said, we went through a lot for you to be here, but no one can tell us. No one can tell us no when God says yes. It was a, it was a long road, but you were here. You are a fighter, as you can see. <laughs> you want what you want, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, as Pastor Thomas always says, God is the owner, and we're just the managers. <laughs> and I've been given the opportunity to be the manager of you until you're able to be the manager of yourself. <laughs> and I'm going to do the best job I can do. I'm going to do the best thing I can do. I know your mother is as well. And I just want to end by saying, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. God has your back no matter what. And just never forget the power of prayer. Because you are here because of the power of prayer. And we love you forever. Thank you. I'm going to ask this congregation if you would please stand and uh, point your hand this way as uh, one of our social pastors anoint uh, Noel as well as these parents. They said it, it does take a village to raise a child. And that's why I take my job very seriously. That's why I don't play with this. I don't play games with people's lives because we are on... Uh, eternity time and so I want you to come in agreement today father in Jesus name we just thank you for Noel thank you for this precious life that you've given this family brother Anthony and, and sister Deandra thank you for your many blessings that you released into this child into this family now Lord we come into agreement today with this family and with this congregation you said in Psalms 127, verses 3 through 4, Behold, children are heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a, is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. We come into agreement today that your angels will encamp around about Noel to protect her and to shield her from any hurt, harm, or danger. We come into agreement that Noel will grow and be healthy and strong that no sicknesses or diseases will come near her. We declare that Noel is, a, is an arrow in the hand of the Lord. And we declare today that we mark her for the kingdom of God, that when she comes of the age of accountability, that she will surrender her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we come into agreement with what these parents have spoken over her life. And we declare that no weapon that's formed against Noel shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against her in judgment she shall condemn for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord we declare that Noel will be the head and not the tail she will be above only and not beneath we declare that Noel will succeed in life that everything her hands touch will be blessed so we speak over these family these uh, these parents the family and the friends the grandparents all that have gathered 
that you would give them the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of how to raise Noel in the fear of the Lord. Help these parents, help these uh, family and friends and this church to help them raise her so that she will be that arrow that you will use to bring destruction to in the hand of the enemy. So we come into agreement this morning, and we thank you because you said, whether well, two or three would touch and agree, that whatsoever we shall ask shall be done of our Heavenly Father. So we bless her, we give her back to you, and we do to speak over her life, and we declare that your blessings overcomes her life and overtakes her life that you would continue to give her favor, Noel favor, with you as well as with all men. So we give you praise this morning for such a gift. Thank you so much for all that you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you for what you shall do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let everybody agree with that prayer. Shout amen. amen. Come on, shout amen again. Amen. Shout amen one more time. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Here's a certificate. They have a CD. Go to the bookstore. They have a CD and a DVD of the church. Okay. All right. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together for. Wow. And the church ought to say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Again, one of the joys that I get is to, you know, I look over this church. Of course, we're 25 years old, and I see babies that were born that are not babies no more. I, I was just talking to Pastor uh, Miller this morning, and um, I said, uh, his son is Caleb, and I said, uh, what grade is Caleb in? I was thinking he was going to say like 7 or 8th grade. He said, he's in the 10th grade. I said, in the what grade? He said, what happened, man? I mean, I mean, he's been grow he grew up in this church, but I see, matter of fact, um, Sister uh, the Brewer's daughter was here last night from college, and I remember when she was born. Now she's at college getting her degrees and all that stuff. But we've been a tremendously blessed family. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let me quickly, I'm going to go uh, over a few announcements. Let me ask you to remember several of our members in prayer. First of all, our own sister Shirley Goodson, she lost her mother. Let's continue to remember her in prayer. Sister Vanessa Penix also lost her mother. Sister Camilla Peterkin lost her aunt. Sister Patricia Ramsey um, lost her mother. Sister Juanita Painter lost her grandmother. Sister Sandy Duncan lost her brother. Brother Wally Bennett uh, lost his brother. That homegoing service will be here on Thursday, October the 13th. The, the viewing will be 11. The service begins at um, 1130. Our own sister LaRonda as well as Felicia Clark, two sisters, they lost their uncle on this past week. Our own sister Latrice Herbin lost her grandmother. And sister Tawana Cephas lost her brother so let's continue to remember them in prayer. Um, those in the hospital this week, our own brother, um, brother, ho, ho, uh, okay, um, brother Robert Joyner, Wesley Long Hospital, um, Sister Tanya Curry. Of course, we're growing inwardly and outwardly. Sister Tanya had a fine baby boy. A amen. And our own Sister Ashley Chapman also had a baby girl. Let's continue to remember these uh, mothers uh, and families in our prayer. Well, it's time for announcements, so take it away. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Again, welcome to all of our first-time attendees. It is such a pleasure to have you and your family to worship with us. And this weekend, we have some very special guests, our own sister, uh, Regina Chacha, and her lovely daughters. Thank you so much for being part of our worship service this weekend, as well as Minister Hudson from all the way from Tanzania, as well as uh, Brother Chacha from Canada. And all those of you that have gathered here this weekend, it is our prayer that your life will be touched and changed as we worship the Lord Jesus Christ together. Well, by the way of announcements, let me just uh, remind you that we're very excited about what's happening in Kernersville. As you know, we purchased the Bowling Alley there, and of course, renovations are being made as we speak. So we're asking all of you that attend the Kernersville services that you would make plans 
that we're, we're shutting down everything in Kernersville until the renovation is all complete. So we actually join us here in Greensboro for all of our services. Uh, do not forget the last service in Kernersville will be on Sunday, October the 16th. And then that Wednesday, October the 19th, we'll be combining all of our services together. And don't forget here in Greensboro, our services are on Wednesdays, 12 noon, we have a free lunch. Then Wednesday night, we have a free dinner from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And then, of course, at 7 p.m., we do the Bible study. Don't forget, please bring a special offering on November the 6th. We're asking everyone who can to bring a special offering for the renovations that's there. It's going to come to like $2.5 million. So if you will help us, please do so. Also, Teamwork Ministries and Teamwork City of Hope invites you and us to an evening of food and fellowship. That is on Friday, October the 21st. As you know, uh, we purchased two tables. Um, Ten can get to the table. We pay for it. Uh, the plates are $25 per person. But if you come under the banner of love and faith for those two tables, uh, it will cost you nothing. Now, you have to get there. It's in Bassett, Virginia, uh, at the old, um, old Bassett High School, um, 3289 Riverside Drive in Bassett, Virginia. Uh, if you would like to go, we have a few seats left, I think. Please call the church at 336-632-0205. Also, join the merit ministry as they go to Pilot Mountain on Sunday, October the 16th. Uh, to intercede on behalf of their families, our church, as well as our nation, uh, while they enjoy the beautiful scenery. Some of you go up there every year with them. They ask that you would please, please bring a lunch with you. Uh, this, was, this will be from 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. For more information, please see uh, Brother and Sister Willie, Willie and, uh, Brother Willie and Sister Trudy Moore, or uh, Pastor Leonard or Kim Miller. Also, join the health and wellness ministry as we host our annual pink out that will be on saturday october the 22nd of course and that's sunday october the 23rd of course that's in awareness of breast cancer october is breast cancer month so join us for that lastly but not least is join us for our international day which will be november the 4th we have three days that we're celebrating god has blessed our church to be very international we have people to come from different parts of the world and we're very, very thankful. And so we started this many years ago that we just stop and celebrate those that God has brought um, to us from different parts uh, of the world. And of course, that will all be on Friday, November the 4th. Uh, we will have food tasting tour around the world. Uh, and I, you know, don't come and eat everything, just taste it, just taste stuff. You know, one, one of the things that I do when I travel, some of you know I just got back from India, I just got back from Germany, and I made sure that I tasted India food and German food. And uh, so just, it's just the food tasting, not for you to get a big old plate. Uh, and then on um, November the 5th, of course, the Saturday night service as well as the Sunday service, those two services on Sunday, we ask that you would dress in um, international attire if you, would, if you desire. If you don't want to, that's all right. But those of us who will address in that, uh, please mark your calendars. There will be a special little um, a service on the 6th, of course, that Sunday uh, of course, acknowledging those who have come from different parts of the world. So we're very blessed to be an international church and let the church say amen. amen. Thank God for technology, but when it breaks down, you got to have a second plan, man. God bless you. God bless you. Don't know what happened, but please, uh, there are many more announcements. Please pick up uh, a week at a glance or go back to the website at www.loveandfaith.com. Dot o -R -G. Well, today is Second Sunday, which means that this is the Voices of Praise, right? I got it right. You know, we have a lot of groups. I have to think of what their names are. But this is the Voices of Praise. Let's put our hands together as they come to share with us in song. Hallelujah. Have you ever been through a storm in your life? 
And in that storm, you made up your mind that no matter what, you was going to praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. the storm. of water forever, forever hallelujah I'm gonna lift my voice and pray forever, your name. I'm gonna bless your name forever, your name. forever I will bless your name
some that said, I will bless the Lord sometimes. No, he didn't say sometimes. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I bless your name. In the good times, the bad times. Oh, now that's five of us. Rest of you. Learn the secret of getting through life. That is blessing the Lord. No matter where you are. Turn to somebody and say, don't matter where you are. Bless his name. Yeah, that was so weak. That was so weak. But I still going to bless his name. Let's put our hands together again for voices of praise. Usually they sing a couple of songs, but um, we, we have another special person that is here that wasn't really uh, scheduled to be here, but they're here, and I'm going to introduce them a little later. But we have some uh, special people that are here today. I'm going to call two, two of them up. Um, first of all, she's no stranger. She's uh, actually, she's a member of the church. She's just not on roll as a member, but she is. Uh, our own sister Regina Chacha, as you know, her husband uh, was my best friend, and he went on with the Lord on last year. Uh, as a matter of fact, my nieces are here. Stand up, my nieces. Come on, yeah, stand up. There they are. Uh, there's, there's Tenzi, there's Rose, and then there's Sarah. This morning I was telling Sarah, you know, they look so beautiful, and I was asking her to give me the secret of their beauty. And um, she wouldn't tell me nothing, so... Young ladies, you don't have to worry about it. She, she kept her secret to herself, but we're very delighted for them to be with us. Let's put our hands together for them. God bless you. Um, but Sister Regina Chacha, of course, that, that's Dr. Chacha, um, a wife. And um, when he went home to be with the Lord, of course, it's just a shock. And most of you know the story. Just a few weeks before um, he passed, I uh, had the opportunity. He and I sat down and just spent uh, a wonderful time uh, reminiscing. He opened my he was the one that opened, I was telling um, them this morning, he was the one that opened my eyes to missions. Um, you know, I thought mission was just a local thing that, you know, you supported a couple places. And the first place he took me, he took me to Poland. And let me tell you, it was cold in Poland. <laughs> he took me in November, and we got in every conceivable weather. It snowed, it sleeted, it did everything. I mean, we left in a blizzard. And then, of course, the second place he took me was to South Africa. And from there, we traveled. Matter of fact, we were in Poland. We stopped in Poland and went to London. And we just, anyway, uh, he taught me uh, parts of ministry. And so when, right before his passing, we had an opportunity to sit down and to talk. And, of course, um, Sister Regina is here today um, to just share. There's a lot of things that are going on at the City of Hope. And, of course, we were, uh, we were part of that. And then when you see these pictures uh, you can just say we're part of that. So let's put our hands together for Sister Regina Chacha as she comes to share. Thank you so much, Pastor Mike and, and all of you. Um, we couldn't do what we're doing without the kind of support and strength. And, and it's, it's always a joy to come back here and... Everyone is so gracious, and um, I just want to thank you again for partnering with us and continuing to partner with us. Um, when my husband passed, many people, particularly in, in Tanzania, thought that this work could not continue, and they didn't believe that, that we you know, would sustain what we had started, much less move forward. But I am here to proclaim and say that we are moving forward. Um, just um, in this past year, we were able to build um, a new dormitory to complete our dining hall, which was had been nearly finished, um, but the biggest challenge and the, that my husband had been praying about and, and working to start was a secondary school for our children. Right now, our children go to our primary school, Destiny Primary School, through Standard 7. And after that, we have to send them away because we don't have our own school. So they walk an hour to school and an hour back home 
and often in the rainy season, you know, they're soaking wet till they get back, and the level of education is not near what we have had and been able to maintain at Destiny Primary, and so it's really sad. So we, we determined this is not going to continue for another year, and so we will be starting um, opening in January for uh, Form 1 and 2, that's like ninth and 10th grade, and, and God has blessed us to be able to do that. Um, so thank you. Another great blessing has been capable leadership, and you'll hear later from Hudson Mahari, but he is now our executive director on the Tanzania side, um, and God had prepared him in his time. Uh, he worked formerly for Missionary Aviation Fellowship. That's where we got to know him. And then he came and worked uh, with, with my husband closely for about two and a half years and was mentored and well prepared so that he is very capable of dealing with all the challenges, the government regulations, the, the building processes, the just the overall um, management supervision um, of the City of Hope. And so it's wonderful that God had prepared him in advance and um, that he was able to step right into that position. So I want to just show you a quick uh, little video that my son put together um, about our secondary school and, and a few pictures then. Thank you. Welcome to the City of Hope. These are some of our leaders, our future leaders. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In 2009, Dr. John Chacha founded Destiny Primary School in Northwest Tanzania. Like many underdeveloped areas, most people there were unable to fulfill basic human needs and were caught in the cycle of generational poverty. Dr. Chacha realized that if given a quality education and opportunities, the children could bring about the change the community needed. We know that the nation of Tanzania is going to be great because we are already shaping the leaders of tomorrow. Destiny Primary School is set apart because of its dedication to excellence. The students are taught from a young age the leadership principles that allow Dr. Chacha to transcend a similar situation and become a successful speaker, author, and humanitarian. I believe that greatness lies in you and you have to constantly continue to cultivate it. Destiny Primary is also an English-speaking school, providing a significant advantage in the larger world. Rare for the area, the school is equipped with a library, trade tools, a music program, and well-trained teachers from all over East Africa. In a few years since it was established, the school has grown to consist of well over 400 students and has excelled. Our students have been recognized for having the fifth highest exam scores in the region and is in the top 3% of schools nationwide. Unfortunately, after their seventh year, these students must attend substandard secondary schools. The government schools in the area are consistently underfunded, understaffed, and overcrowded. Because of this, many gifted students will go to join the unskilled workforce, despite their great potential. In honor of Dr. Chacha and his dream, we are building the Dr. Chacha Secondary School and Institute of Leadership. We strive to continue the tradition of excellence set forth by Destiny Primary School. The school will consist of eight classrooms, an expanded library, three labs, and an athletic area. Additional dormitories and administrative buildings will also be necessary, bringing the estimated cost for the fully functioning school to $1.5 million. The school will serve at least 200 students, and the teachers and staff will be dedicated to creating an environment that will help them become Tanzania's next leaders and innovators. We ask you to please join us in completing the dream of Dr. Chacha, giving these precious children quality education and unique opportunities. Through your generosity, you can provide the youth of Tanzania a chance to become the leaders of tomorrow.
Yeah, it's exciting. Every time I just see that again, I, I, um, I'm just so determined that we, we have to press forward. We need to see this happen. And I'm so thankful for all who are standing with us um, and this church in particular um, to help us see this happen. Let's just show those few pictures that I had also um, given of our newer facilities. This is our dining hall, and you can just flip through those quickly. Um, that's the outside. This hall not only will serve the primary school, but also for feeding the secondary school. And we can also use it for conferences. In December, we're going to have a conference both for leadership, and you can move on through, um, for leadership, uh, for pastors, as well as for youth. And so um, it's a multi-purpose facility with a stage. I don't think the stage is showing on the picture, but it's, um, it's well equipped and, and will be put to good use. Um, the other building we were able to have um, completed in this next year is a new dormitory, as you see there. Um, this it also has multi-purposes. It will be used for students, but on holiday we can use it um, for pastors for so they can have a place to stay during the conference so it's a great blessing now here is our secondary school um, it's just a little bit beyond this stage right now where um, we have the two classrooms in one lab under roof here but uh, about two or three more classrooms are almost under roof and um, it's a lot to be done between now and January, um, but we are just impressed. The workers have been so dedicated, and it's, it's like God has put a special anointing on building right now. And um, it's been a time, really, with everything that's happening, it's, there's, a, there's a spirit of acceleration and just moving quicker and quicker um, to see this vision completed and to see our children um, able to get that education at the higher level. And so um, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. And um, there's another young man here, uh, Brother Joel Cha-Cha, all the way from Canada. I had the opportunity to meet him several years ago at the City of Hope, as a matter of fact, and um, uh, um, I had the privilege of riding with um, his wife. Of course, he was in another car, but we were riding from, uh, we went from Nakuru, um, um, uh, Kenya, to the City of Hope in Tanzania. And so we got a chance to learn a lot about him. I, actually, he's from uh, Kenya. His wife is from uh, Jamaica. I don't know how they got together, but that's, you know, uh, and I said that because we got a lot of Jamaican saints here, uh, but uh, what a pleasure it's been to know him. He just retired. He worked for the government of Canada, and now he's uh, very actively involved with the City of Hope. Let's put our hands together as Brother Joel uh, Cha-Cha. He, he, he and Dr. Cha-Cha are brothers. Not really, but they are. Thank you so much, Pastor. I, I, I think I like it here. I, I, <laughs> besides it not being so cold, I, I like the singing. I, I could listen to that all day. It, it is really a pleasure for me and a joy to be with you. Uh, like Pastor said, it's, it's, it's about 10 years ago since we met um, a person in Kenya and um, we, we shared together. No, actually, it was, it was in Martinsville we met before that. And then we had the privilege of sharing together, breaking the ground, a city of hope for the medical center, which you made happen. And people are being treated there today. So it, it, it really, thank you so much. It really gives me joy to be with you and to share this moment with you. 
But I also want to thank you. I know Regina has thanked you. But I also want to thank you on behalf of Regina, the family, and the kids. <clears throat> I heard Pastor say, <clears throat> the girls are his nieces. <clears throat> and they truly are. You see, when we got hit by this strategy, by this tragedy, people rallied around Regina, the family, those of us who are close to Chacha. But none as close as you folks did. And I want to thank you. It is the love that you showed, the support that you continue to give personally as individuals that has sustained my sister-in-law. It is that love that comes from you folks that has given her the strength, that has enabled her focus. And we are, like she said, determined to make it happen. The vision that God gave to Dr. Church and Regina. Pastor mentioned that I was, until last Friday, September 30th, I worked for the government of Canada. Had a good job. Also paid well, <laughs> which I didn't mind. but I decided God's work is more important. And so I resigned, I've retired now, and I will do what I can to give Regina and Hudson and the kids, and of course the kids at the City of Hope support. But we're only able to do that with your love and with your support, and I want you to know from Regina personally, that support is very, very much appreciated. And we thank you again, and we love you all. Bless you. I know it's hard for you to believe that, but um, Brother Cha-Cha and uh, Hudson and I, you know, we look like twins. I mean, come, 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 come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come, come over here, Hudson. We, we didn't plan this, but come, come on, come, Hudson, come up here. You know, we all got on gray and purple, and, um, you know, we didn't plan it. <laughs> we, we didn't plan that, but uh, God bless you. And again, I want to, uh, it's time to give. It's time to give, yeah. If you need an envelope, please raise your hands. I am not going to do the teaching I normally do. I'm not going to do that usually. But um, you should know by now what you want to give. The Bible says that the liberal soul shall be made fat. I've taught you well, and I've taught you the 10-10-80 plan. Just recently, I was talking to um, someone in the gym, and they shared with me how, um, you know, people walk up to me all the time, and, and um, some people I know, some people I don't, some people I do know their face. But the guy said, he said, you don't know me, but uh, I belong to love and faith. And I said, well, why I don't know you? And he said, well, he said, you said it before I get there late and leave early. But he said, the teaching has changed my life. He said, I was in the church. All they did was take, all they did was take. And she, he said, I heard you talk about the 10, 10, 80 plan. And he said, not only did I hear you say it, but I applied it to my life. And he said, of course, 10% of everything God blesses you with financially, you should what? Give, give tie. You should give to God. Always bless God. When God blesses you financially, always give him 10%. But the second 10% that comes into your life, you should do what? You should save. You should have a savings. And that's what he said. He said, Pastor, I have a savings. He said, for five years, he said, I've been to church. I was in church all my life, and I never heard that you should save. And he said, I'm saving. And he said, I got a good savings. I said, amen, brother. And, but he says, of course, and I've learned how to live out of the 80%. I've learned how to budget. 
It is my prayer and desire that you will live a holistic life, that you will live a life dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. But secondly, it's my, my desire is that you will live a good life. You know, God blessed us to be a blessing. And there are so many of us, we swandle the, the finances that God blessed us with. And so it is my desire that you learn and you grow and that you would not just know the principles, the, the spiritual principles of sowing and reaping is God's plan to provide for my life. If I sow according to the plan of God, if I sow according to the will of God, God will provide for me. Amen? So are we ready to give? Let's stand to our feet as we honor the Lord this morning with our giving. Father, thank you so much for this privilege and opportunity that we have to sow into good ground. We thank you for those that are giving through the way of internet. We thank you for those that are giving uh, by the way of uh, through the drop box, those that are giving through the mail, those that are giving in this offering. You promised to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we would not have enough room to receive. You promised that you'll rebuke the devour for our sakes. You promised that the enemy would not be able to destroy the fruit of our ground. You promised that our vine would not cast its fruit before its time. You promised that all the nations will call us blessed and we shall be a delightsome land. So we come into agreement with your word today and we do thank you again that these gifts will be a blessing to Love and Faith Christian Fellowship. We declare that these gifts will be a blessing locally, nationally, and internationally. We declare that these gifts will be a blessing in your kingdom and in our lives and our family lives. So, Father, thank you so much for the abundance that shall come into our life because we are planting into good soil. So we worship you and we glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And that everybody agree with that prayer, say... Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. Please do not stand until the buckets have passed your rope. Every praise. With one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise to our God.
let the church say. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, praise team. God bless you. Today we're very, very blessed. Um, um, right before I bring the speaker up, um, you know, our church has been blessed. There are many people that's kind of come through here that wasn't planned. And this happened to be a young lady that's here this morning all the way from London. She's a recording artist. Uh, she was in the States for a special thing, and, and um, she dropped by this morning, and I asked her if she would come and just uh, give us a song of praise. Her, her name is uh, J.C. May. Um, she has some CDs, so please don't let her leave here with a CD. Just buy them all of them. Just buy, and then when, if you buy them all, then put an order in for the ones that she couldn't bring. But we're very, very blessed and delighted to have with us Sister Jessie May, all the way from London, England. The first time she's ever, have, this is the first time you've been to Greensboro? First time she's been, first time been in North Carolina? First time she's been in the state of North Carolina. Stand to your feet as Sister Jessie May comes. And, and while she's coming, welcome Kernersville. Kernersville of viewing. Uh, Kernersville of viewing today. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for Jesse. I was going I asked, you may be seated. I asked Sister May, was she married? And she said she was. I looked at it and saw a ring. If she wasn't, I was going to say that if there was anybody interested, they had to come through me. But that's all right. She's already taken. Let's put our hands together one more time. Thank you, Pastor. Well, good morning, church. It is such an honor and a privilege to be here. I was actually going to say good afternoon because we're actually five hours ahead of you. Um, so, yeah, I had to remember, no, it's good morning, it's good morning, it's good morning. Um, so my husband is actually watching this as we speak. So can you just say hi to my husband? For me? Thank you. <laughs> so I'm JC May and I'm from London, England, and I'm a praise and worship leader. And I've been here for the past nine days, just going to different churches and blessing them and ministering to them. And so I'm going to just sing this one song before the word of God comes. And it just says, great is thy faithfulness. Come on, how do you believe that God's faithfulness is great? Come on, church. I know I'm in a believing church. How many of you believe that God's faithfulness is great? Come on, church. Have a came Matthew, did it move you? Have a came Matthew, did it touch you that much? It could have been worse, but God kept you. So we're going to sing, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. Because His faithfulness is so great. His love is so great. And I'm, I'm so privileged and honoured to know that I am wrapped in His love. And that I am wrapped in his kindness and that I am wrapped in his faithfulness. And no matter how stupid I am, that God still loves me. Come on. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. O oh Lord, my Father. For there is no shadow of turning with thee. Mm. Jesus. Thou change it not, thy compassions, they, they fail not. Mm. For thou hast been, thou forever will be. So will you help me sing? Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. For more. Mercy, I see. Oh, oh, 
What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? We say nothing but the blood of Jesus. Ah! Oh, precious is the blow. Can you help me say? One more time, one more time. Lift your voice and sing. Oh, that, that makes me white as snow. No. blood of Jesus oh the blood oh Jesus come on shout it out oh the blood of Jesus Hey, 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 hey. It washes white as snow. So we're going to say that one more time. We're going to say there is power in the blood. There is power in the blood of G. There is power in the blood of G. There is power in the blood. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Oh, we do not cheese. Why does no? Come on, turn to somebody and say, there is power in the name of Jesus. Quickly stand to your feet. Come on, Hudson, I'm not going to give him. Come on, preach, man. All the way from Tanzania, the city of hope. God bless you, man. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can take a moment right now and receive that healing. You can take a moment right now and receive that grace. And receive that transformation. 
in the name of Jesus. If you are not born again, yes, the blood is still flowing. You can take a moment right now, right now and receive Jesus in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Oh! Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. I feel good. Do you feel good? Hallelujah. If you are there and you are not born again, come on, lift up your hand right now. If you are not born again, all the hands down, all the hands down, all the hands down. All the hands down. If, if you are there, you don't know Jesus. As your Lord and Savior, this is a good moment for you. Just lift up your hand right now. We'll pray with you. Don't miss this moment. You do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Don't lose this moment before you bring the word of God. Lift up your hand right now. You are not born again. You have no Jesus in your life. Don't let this moment pass you by. Raise that hand right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you ask somebody? Ask someone next to you, are you born again? Ask somebody, are you born again? Come on, are you asking somebody? Ask your neighbor, are you born? If they are not born again, if the answer is no, just raise your hand. If you have a neighbor who is not born again, just raise your hand. Oh, everybody here has Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, my sister, for that wonderful ministry. It is glorious. Thank you, choir, praise and worship team. You are just amazing. Thank you. And thank you, Pastor, sir, for giving me the opportunity to be here today. I'm really so thankful to God. I'm humbled that you can sit there and give me the platform to stand here. I'm really so, so humbled. I say thank you, sir. You do not know what you have until you lose it. We are about to take pastor away to Tanzania. You guys have had enough. Pastor, let's go to Tanzania. East Africa is waiting for pastor. <laughs> He's waiting for pastor. They love pastor very much. Every so often, we, they have come for meetings there. The pastors and church leaders and the children have been, tre been tremendously blessed. And so we would love to have him back home. <laughs> By the way, that is home. That is home. You missed it. That is home. Praise the Lord. And you are an amazing congregation. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We came here to say thank you. Above all other things, we just came to say thank you, love and faith for being a wonderful blessing to us. We are so honored to be, to have this strong relationship that you have been able to support the city of hope, the children of Tanzania, the children of God. The Bible says that God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love 
that you've shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints. Those children are the least of these. They are saints. God is not unrighteous to forget. He remembers you. He remembers you. Keep doing it. Keep doing that great work. The Lord is blessing you and increasing his grace over your lives. So, Pastor, thank you. Thank you again for being a blessing to us. Uh, we have a second school, as you heard. We are starting next year in January uh, from class two classes. You had uh, grade nine and ten. And we, the children are very, very excited about this. And we are so grateful to those of you who have been faithful, who have continued to support us. And we are trusting God. Our first one of finance is uh, five hundred and sixty thousand dollars but the entire infrastructure of the secondary school will cost us 1.5 million dollars and that is very little money because our God is faithful amen. amen so we are so happy to share that with you as a church and just to thank you for all that you've done the hospital is operating very well and it's growing the vision of that hospital pastor is to become a referral hospital. And your name will be on it. Your name will be on it. So thank you very much. Um, we thank God for Mama Regina. The Lord has been so faithful to her. She's been a big blessing providing leadership for Teamwork Ministries and the Seed of Hope. We just want to continue to ask you to continue to pray for her. She's been crisscrossing the world every so often, and the Lord has continued to renew her strength. So thank you very much. And our able board member here, uh, our brother Chacha, all these people have been a wonderful blessing, and I just want to say thank you. Um, God has a word for us today. Praise the Lord. He does not gather his people in vain. I am trying to come down so I, that I can preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, my name is Hudson. I'm married to one wife. And Pastor, my wife, is actually streaming live from East Africa. We are seven hours ahead of you. So we have been watching Pastor. Dr. Church actually used to watch you on Sundays. He used to be here attending church. You can imagine. And the reason was being a non-denominational ministry, teamwork, and it was impossible for him to affiliate himself to one church over there. So it was only good for him to be able to feed from the man of God through the internet here. And that is what a wonderful blessing this church has been to us. So thank you, thank you very much again. Um... We started yesterday by talking about what kind of church am I? What kind of church are you? Now, from the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 1, I'm just giving a recapitulation of what we did yesterday. There is something else I'll be dwelling on right now. But it's a continuation of that very topic, what kind of church am I? Uh... I'm trusting God you'll be able to catch my diction, my, pronunci my pronunciation. <laughs> I, 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 there's something I'm saying here that uh, when I was coming here, I was saying I'm going to North, North Carolina. <laughs> North Carolina. So if you hear something like that, just know I mean North Carolina. Is that okay? <laughs> Please. So you can, you can change all those things and you will hear the word of God. Now, <clears throat> The angel of the church in Ephesus writes, Revelation chapter 2. So in that book of Revelation, you know, the revelator sent a message for each of the seven churches. And the message was so specific to every church. And so what we're asking from that, if Jesus or, or the angel was to send a message to the current church 
What would that message be like? What would that message be? Because the church today, it probably would not be saying to the church of Christ in Greensboro. He would probably not be saying to the church of Christ in Martinsville, church of Christ in D.C., Washington. The reason is because the church looks like does not seem to have something in common anymore. We no longer seem to have something in common. I have listened to the pastor's message when, when he was talking about going back to the basics. Who remembers that? Praise the Lord. And in that message, pastor says something like, there are certain differences that he can overlook for as long as we agree on the foundation. Like, people believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, how he came into this world through a virgin, he died, and he was raised from the dead, and he was, he's, he's resurrected, and he's seated on the right hand side of the Father. You know, that if somebody believes in that, we are together, we can agree. This is the thing about baptism and those other funny things of mode of dressing. Pastor says, we can overlook that. There was something common about the churches then. But today, we have different experiences. We have people, and I'm not here to criticize churches. I'm just saying, I'm just saying for the purpose of my message that he probably will be, there are churches that use water, you know. <laughs> some use soil, you know. Some use many things. So we do not seem to have something in common. So it will be difficult for, G, for, for that angel to be speaking to us today, to the church of Christ in Greensboro, for the purpose of my message. This is a wonderful church. He probably will be talking about the church of Christ in, the, no, to, the, to the Hallelujah Church, or to the church of deliverance, or to the church of prosperity, or to the church of, claim it, what is it, name it and claim it. They are all manner of things. Until we confuse even the devil himself. <laughs> we need to go back to the roots of what our foundation was and is supposed to be. That is why we are not able to take a stand as the body of Christ and defend the truth. But listen, our God is not helpless. Our God will always defend himself. Yes. You know that, isn't it? Yes. But you know what? He defends himself through you on earth. You don't hear angels coming nowadays and speaking to people. You don't hear that every so often. This is the angel of God here, right here. The man of God. Yes. And what he says is God speaking to you. But you know what happens, Pastor? We take the word of God and we begin to consider it. The word of God is not for our consideration. The word of God is for our obedience. We receive the engrafted word of God which is able to save our souls. Now, saving souls is not talking about salvation that you have, like what the altar call was making earlier, that somebody does not have Christ we give him Christ. That is not what I'm talking about. This kind of salvation he's talking about here is preservation of the salvation that you already have. That the word of God is able to preserve your salvation. That you are able to work it out. As the Lord and the Holy Ghost are working within you, you are able to work out your salvation. You are able to practice being a Christian. Practice. Practice is not about just morning devotions, you know. Uh, my devotions, I wake up, and I've seen this in America while I've been here. Wake up in the morning, uh, get your small book, get devotional book. It's good. Da, 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 da. From there, you forget. You walk away. You begin doing your thing, you know. But you guys are holy. You guys are precious. You don't do things like that. Where I come from, people do all these kind of things, I'm telling you. You see, listen, our life is the life of God. Right. It's called Zoe. Zoe, the God kind of life. Yeah. That is what you carry. Yeah. 
You cannot handle yourself so carelessly. You cannot misbehave with your words. Your mouth is not for eating french fries. Your mouth is not for eating burgers and what else? Rice and chicken only. Your mouth was created for a much higher, much greater purpose. The Bible says the power of life and death is in your mouth. Your mouth was meant to dispense life and life and life and life again. In the name of Jesus. Put your mouth to work correctly. But listen. You must understand that you have a clean heart. The Bible says if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. A new creation. That is what you are. I think the fellows who invented baptism and changed names, they meant, they are fellows who invented that, so forgive my language. Baptism, and then, this is where I come from, my name is Hudson. So Hudson is my baptism name. Can you imagine? Yeah. They meant that I have now changed. I'm a new person. I have a different name. You have a different name. <laughs> you carry the name of Jesus. You are Peter of Jesus. You are Tom of Jesus. You are a different species. A species that cannot die. A species that knows no defeat. A species that is born of God. The Bible this is a supernatural life that is at work within you. That is the consciousness you should carry. You have a new heart. A heart that cannot carry garbage. A heart that cannot be jealous of somebody's dress. A heart that does not have enemies. The heart of God is a heart of love. No wonder you are called love and faith. Hallelujah. Is there someone you are struggling to love? Listen, it is your choice. You receive the full package of love when you received Christ. Stop it. Love the person from today. Make up your mind. Are you going to love this person? No matter what they do. No matter what they say. Now listen, the Bible says, all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That is you. Say that is me. me. Now listen. Every bad person, quote unquote, any person who is giving you a hard time, who is quote unquote killing your peace, has been placed there by God so that God may fulfill his divine purpose on your life. Don't lose that opportunity, child of God. Don't lose that opportunity. It could be your husband. It could be your husband is misbehaving. It does not matter. The love of God compels us to love this person so much. Regardless of what they are doing. Praise the Lord. It's called unconditional love. Unconditional. Agape. Unconditional. So why are we pegging conditions on this thing? If there is someone hurting you so much, we understand. But listen. You've got the power to love that person and see what God sees in that person. You've got the power. You've got the ability, inherent ability, inherent ability. It is wired within you when you received Christ. We can love people again. Pastor, the reason people are not coming to Jesus today is because our love life as Christians is confusing. Christians fighting each other. Mm. It was not so from the beginning. It was not so. It was not so from the beginning. No wonder when Jesus came, 
He did not stop us. Sorry, when he came, he loved us so much. He found you busy in your sinful life, very busy wallowing in the miasma of sin. Very busy wallowing in there. He did not stop you first. He said, you continue, but I'm going to die on the cross anyway. You continue, but I'm going to die on the cross for you. Do you understand? He did not say, stop first, then I can die for you. He never did that. Friends, we have a clean heart. David prayed and said, create in me a clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit in me. Now listen, that heart that David sought after with tears, you have it now. You don't need to cry anymore for it. Say, I got that heart. Say with gusto, I got that heart. Say like you mean it, I got a new heart. You no longer have a stone heart as a child of God. Now listen. When you carry that consciousness in your spirit, in your mind, every time, you will increasingly find yourself acting out of a clean heart. You will increasingly find yourself acting right. It is possible for a Christian to be sinless. It is possible for us to be sinless. When you wake up in the morning, you look at yourself in the mirror. You begin to speak to that person you are seeing right there. Then I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I got the mind of Christ. My heart is clean. Sorry. I think the thoughts I think are clean thoughts. When you speak that way and leave your closet. Now, when you speak that way, and um, where is this man of God? <laughs> Everyone is talented differently. Thank you, sir. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Pastor. Hey, I appreciate Pastor for me. Wow. <laughs> now you see. Now, thank you. When you speak that way, you go to your office, you go to your place of work, you meet people. Your mind is secure. You have predetermined how you're going to live your life that day. You have predetermined how you will live your life that day. I'm telling you, you can be holy every day. You can be righteous every day. It is possible! Let's stop this mentality of saying, you know, I'm a human being. When you go before the Lord, you pray, Lord, I'm unworthy to stand before you. Come on! He counts you worthy! Worthy, worthy, worthy! Yeah, yeah. Jesus died for you. Yeah. How come you can stand and say, I am unworthy? Come on! Let's change what we say concerning ourselves. He says, you are special. He says, we have become joint promoters of the kingdom of God. We are joint heirs together with him. How can you be unworthy? How? It sounds humbling to say that. Listen, humility is not in the words. It's a state of your heart. It's not in the words that you speak. It's not just in the words you say. You know what God did for you. You know what he did for you. You can embrace that with confidence and act correctly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, today I'm talking just slightly something different about now that you know you have a clean heart, but you're still in this world. So there are struggles, there are issues that we, we face in this world. And I call those things dealing with the inner conflicts. Dealing with the inner conflicts. How then understanding that you are a new creation born of God, you have a new heart, but then you are still in this world. How do you deal with the conflicting issues of life? How do you handle those things? Instead of enjoying our lives as believers, we find ourselves going through motions of life. 
so frustrated. But listen, God does not have the responsibility of making us happy. That is not God's responsibility. You can't say, God, make me happy. He does not answer that thing. He does not answer it. What he did was to put joy in your spirit when you received him. He did that. Make yourself happy. Make yourself happy. So when you are born again, the joy of the Lord came as a package to you. God knew you cannot, this Christian life, you cannot make it by your own strength. You need the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, to cause you to mount up strong resistance against the forces of darkness that want to fight you. So you need that joy to remain strong. That joy you already have. Can you say, I got the joy of the Lord? So it's up to you to live a joyful life. It's up to you. So God is not going to make you any more joyful than he made you when you received him. He's not going to do that. He has done it. It is finished. He said, it is finished. He has done it. So there is no one in the whole world who has the responsibility of making you joyful. It's not your husband. It's not your wife. They're not your children. They have no responsibility of making you joyful as a believer. So whether you enjoy this life, or not, it is your business. It is your business. Maturity is about responsibility. Take responsibility. So joy has nothing to do with what is happening to you or around you. It has nothing to do with that. So joy has nothing to do with your experiences. No. You can be joyful in the midst of trouble. You can be. You can be joyful. But joy has expressions. Joy has expressions. You can't say I am joyful and not express it. So you're just walking like this. And then, oh, I am so joyful. You cannot do that. People will see that. People will see it. And as they see it, it becomes contagious. They will praise you are God. Because they will wonder, how do you make it in the midst of this trouble? How do you do this? Then you have a window of opportunity to share the Lord. We deny the Lord that opportunity when we do not live, in, when we do not live consistently with what our faith pro professes or requires. The, our lives that is full of inconsistencies makes it so difficult for us to win souls to the Lord. So we must go back to the basics and be consistent with what we say what we do. Laughter is an expression of joy. Praise, songs, and thanksgiving, all these are expressions of joy. And we have my brother right there, man. Man of God. Come on, my brother. Stand up. This man of God has just done exactly that. Let's appreciate my brother. Eh? Ay, 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 ay. I'm telling you, all I've seen since yesterday was joy, 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 joy. That is glorious. Ah! Brother, you, you blessed me. So, the Bible says in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 13, is anyone among you afflicted? Pray! There is a remedy for everything. James 5, verse 13. And then it says, is anyone happy? 
Let him sing psalms. How do you sing psalms? It's very simple. If you don't know, you can just flip anywhere in psalms. It doesn't matter. How do you sing psalms? Just flip anywhere. Why is it? Yeah. And then you say, okay. May God arise. May his enemies be scattered. May God arise. His enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. You begin singing psalms. Our Christian life is practical. There are some fellows who must pray I don't know how many times a day. They look at the clock. They do it. Listen, we have our own way. We have our own style. Yeah. The Bible says this book of the law should never depart from where? Your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Meditation here is not by your mind. It's by your mouth. You meditate by your mouth. How do you meditate by your mouth? By reading the word of God and speaking it. Reading the word of God and speaking it. Reading the word of God and speaking it. Speak it, speak it, speak it. Day and night. Hallelujah. Hmm. We have no time for gossip. We have no time for criticizing the government. We have no time. We have no time for criticizing politicians. We have no time. Our responsibility is to pray for them. <laughs> Our responsibility is to pray for them. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. There are things that happen. Listen. Jesus is in heaven. Is that true? But he's also in your heart. Okay, that is a topic for another day. Now, in heaven, what is Jesus doing? Interceding. And the Bible says we are seated together with him. We are seated together with him. In other words, what Jesus is doing, we are, we are, we are doing. We are not there just there looking at Jesus. Hey, Jesus, how are you doing today? No, no. We are doing what he is doing. Listen. Satan is in this world. What is he doing? The Bible says he is looking for someone whom he may devour. <laughs> but listen, he's doing something else. He is the accuser of brethren. Now listen, I teach you something. You may know this already. Let me remind you. Anytime you open your mouth as a child of God to criticize, to speak against anybody, to do anything, to speak anything negative, you are joining the camp of the devil to accuse the saints. Anytime you open your mouth, you, oh, I don't know, I, how, oh, they don't look good, what is this guy doing? No, 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 I don't like it, no, 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 all those guys, you see, when I can't even say it. You are joining the enemy to accuse brethren while you are supposed to be seated together with Jesus interceding for these people. Praise the Lord. America is a good nation. You guys don't know where we come from. <laughs> the infrastructure is wonderful. America is a great country. Let's not destroy it by our, with our mouth. Amen. Is it by our mouth or with our mouth? Yeah, let's not destroy it. Speak good about this country. Pray for those that are in leadership. Pray for them. Listen, Jesus is not running for presidency. He will not run. Don't look for Jesus' qualities in people like those. You will never find them. Let them do what they're supposed to do, what politicians do. Let them do their thing. You do your thing. Do your thing as a child of God. Pray for them. Jesus said, let's give to Caesar what belongs to him. You are required to vote. Go and vote. Even if you don't like them, just pick up the ballot paper you do not know. Just close your eyes and vote anyway. That is your responsibility. It is a sin if you don't do it. Vote. We will change this world. We will change this world. Your voting can be a form of prayer. You are just doing to Caesar, giving to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. 
We can change this nation. Listen. The reason the devil has not destroyed this world is because of the church. Listen. The church is the restraining force. The church is the restraining force against the angel of death. The church. Now listen. When Jesus, when God wanted to set free the children of Israel, something happened. After telling Moses, Moses, go! Tell these guys to let my people go. But God told Moses, you know what? I know that guy will harden his heart. But go anyway. Now, you see? It is good to understand the character of your enemy. It's good to understand the character of your enemy. That guy will not release them. But go anyway. Moses is there and Aaron, he comes and says, hey, who will I tell them sent me? Tell them it's I am. They even don't know you, God. That guy called Pharaoh has many gods. He has the gods of prosperity, the god of fertility, of giving children, the, of getting children, the god of so many things. So when you say I am, they would wonder, wait, who is this god I am? We have so many gods here. They think it's one of their gods. But listen, that's quickly. Then Moses throws Harold. Harold, throw that stick down on the snake. Boom, snake comes out. And Pharaoh laughed. <laughs> he laughed at this guy. He called the magicians. Magicians, come quickly. Magicians, come. You know what they did? They also made their, they created their own miracles. Snakes came out. But a good thing happened. Moses was still scared. Hi, what's going to happen here? What happened? The, bigger, the snake of Moses started, began to swallow the snakes of these guys. But listen, many miracles happened before. Many miracles happened before Pharaoh could re release the children of Israel. Here is where I wanted to come to. If you know the character of your enemy, you will know what position to take in order to win. Pastor said, we fight from a position of victory. We are not fighting for victory. Now, Jesus, God said, told Moses, hey, let all the Israelites put blood. Where? On the doorposts. And the angel came at night. When he saw the blood, you know what happened? Passed over. That angel was not the angel from God. You must understand that. The angel of death that night was not an angel from God. What God did, God removed the restraining power of the angel or from the enemy. He removed that restraining power and the angel came destroying. When he saw the blood, he passed over. When he saw the blood, he passed over. Listen, the church, you are the restraining force of the schemes and the gimmicks of the enemy to destroy this world. Which is why you cannot join him. You, we cannot join the enemy. We cannot do that. We have to take our rightful position as the church of Jesus Christ. So, once you understand these things as a child of God, you will understand how to deal with the conflicts that you experience every day here on earth. For example, you see these fellows called uh, the guys who are put in the jail. You know them? Cyrus and Paul. They were in jail. But what happens? They continued praising and rejoicing. What happened? What happened? They were set free because of praising and rejoicing. If we can only remain consistent and display the true character of who we are in this world, 
those things that easily beset us will fall off. They will fall off. They will fall off. You can deal successfully with conflicting issues. You can deal with them. Okay. Now, in the book of Job, chapter 5, verse 22. Job 5, 22. The Bible says, At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. You see? In the moments of destruction and famine, you will laugh. Laugh. Utacheka. That is Greek from where we come from. You will laugh, utacheka. Can we say utacheka? Yes, you will laugh. What is telling you in those, if those things come your way, those difficult moments, they will have no effect on you. They will have no effect on you. But the problem is in our times, we try to help God. We try to help God in our times. Whenever we face challenges like those. The problem is whenever we help God, we should remember it will cost us something. It will cost you something. In the book of Genesis chapter 18 and verse 10, God tells Abraham, you will have a son. Have a son. And Sarah listens in and he hears instruction from God. And what does Sarah do? She laughs. That was good. But the next thing that Sarah did is what showed that her laughter was not consistent with the word that God had spoken to Abraham, that you will have a son. So Sarah told Abraham, Abraham, God said you'll have a baby. Yeah, but I think God forgot that I'm too old. I can't conceive anymore. Let us help God. Pick that girl, Hagar. He, she will give you a son. And that happened. And you know the story. Ishmael came to this world. Sarah performed the miracle. Like we many times we perform miracles ourselves. We're helping God. I'm about to finish. We're helping God. Sarah performed the miracle. But at what cost? Today, today, the world is in crisis because of what Sarah did. Terrorism was born right there. Right there. But you know what? Isaac, the son of the promise, still came anyway. He still came. If only Sarah would have waited longer. If only she could have waited long, a little longer. Isaac would have appeared on the scene. Wait, child of God. Wait. There is hope for you. There is hope for America. There is hope. Praise the Lord. Wait. What Sarah needed to do was to receive the word of God. Now, when the word of God comes, it gives hope. So there is an expectation that is created in your spirit about what God will do in the future. Now what our responsibility is, is to receive the word of God and mix it with faith. With faith. Wait. Mix it with faith. That is how we receive the word from God, which brings hope. Sarah decided to go natural. There were two covenants that were created there. It's an allegory. Two covenants. One of born of the natural process, Ishmael. 
and one who is born of the promise of God, which is by the Spirit, Isaac. Friends, when we allow our senses to determine our step of action, it will cost us. It will cost us. It will cost us. Sarah decided to create a miracle. Please don't create a miracle for yourself. If you're not married, you're trusting God for marriage, please wait. Because of focusing on the natural things, we have ended up having so many challenges. I don't want to mention them. You know them. We end up making wrong decisions until we confuse the people of the world. You had God, didn't you? Oh, yes, I had God. No, you made the miracle yourself. <laughs> Things that God does are permanent in nature. They will stand the test of times. They come with grace. They come loaded with much more grace to help you, to propel you over every storm, including Storm Matthew. They come with grace. They come with grace. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 22 and 23, it is written that Abraham had two sons, and the one by a bond maid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by the promise. I'll just give you the scripture where that is coming out from. Go for the promise. Go for the promise. Go for the word of God. Mix it with faith. Mix it with faith. When God speaks his word to you, his word brings hope. I've said that. God's word ministers three things. God's word ministers faith to you. It ministers hope. And God's word ministers love. So I really love the name of this church. God's word ministers hope. It ministers faith. It ministers love. Everything you need in the word of God, that is where it is. God and his word are one. The Bible says the word was God. So God and his word are one. God is love, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8. God's word ministers love, faith, and hope. Many times when people hear the word of God, they get the first thing which the word gives, which is hope. Many times when you hear the word of God, you only get the first thing, which is hope. That's what you carry out. But the next step is what you need to really look at. Do you mix it with faith and love? The word of God will always do what it says it will do. Always. It will never fail. It will produce results that God wants. Not what we want. That word will produce results that God wants. If you don't mix it with faith, you will have the same results that Sarah had. If you don't mix the word of God with faith, it means you are doing natural things. You are doing things from the sense realm. And you cannot please God without what? Faith. So you are doing your own things because you are not pleasing God. So mix the word of God which speaks hope. Mix it with faith and love. And your results will not be like Sarah's results. 
quickly, I mentioned another calamity happened, and, and, and another allegory happened. Follow the story of Abraham. Much later on, his, his son, Isaac, gets married to who? Who? Rebecca, isn't it? See, another thing happens. When Isaac wants to die, he's about to die, he tells the son, hey, bring me some wild meat that I may bless you. But Sarah had conflicting things when she was expecting the children. And she went to inquire from the Lord about these conflicting things. And God told her, ha, listen, the older child will serve, well, no, the older child is blessed. He will be the leader. There, there were many, many blessings that God spoke concerning the older child. But what happens? Isaac loves Esau, the older son. It's the same family. Jacob loves, sorry, Rebecca loves Jacob. Same family. Divisions come in. Favoritism came in. Isaac did a mistake. He looked at his stomach and he got it wrong. Isaac would still have blessed his son without having to send him to the wild to go get meat. Those are natural things. When you focus on the natural things, it will cost you. What did it cost them? You know what Rebecca did to Jacob. First, Esau lost his birthright. The second thing, Rebecca lies, deceives the husband. And what happened? That good thing and blessing they were supposed to see as a family became a big problem. The sons that they loved very much, they lived without them. Rebecca, she loved Jacob, but that was the last time she saw Jacob. This is what happens in families when we embrace natural things and not living by faith. Families of God must embrace faith. Propagate their lives by faith. Talk faith. Live by faith. All the time. That will destroy favoritism. That will destroy divisions in families. That will destroy jealousy. Unforgiveness will go. Competition, unhealthy competition will go from families. Because of faith. These are things you should never do. Walk out of the natural. Make your faith so sharper. Feed on the word of God. Sharpen your faith by feeding on the word of God. We will be blessed again. <laughs> I use that word. We will be blessed. Our families will prosper. Our church will grow. You will increase more than you are today. Praise the Lord. You see, when you open your eyes of faith, you are, we are already full. Oh, we are okay. You relax. The Bible says the harvest is ready. <laughs> the workers are fewer. Respond. Church, respond to the word of God by faith. As I finish... You can enjoy your trip of life. You can enjoy this trip. You can enjoy what you, you... You can enjoy yourself in the Lord. You can have fun in the things of God. You can do that. He will fill your mouth with laughter. You can say things like, I'm a success in God. You can declare these things over your life. You can speak things that, that, that make you more, makes you more joyful. You can do those things. You can reign in life as a child of God. So judge those things that are not supposed to be there, that bring conflicts within you. Judge them. Forget about them. Allow 
Don't allow those things in your spirit. Don't allow them. Guard your heart. Guard your heart diligently. Out of it flows the issues of life. The word guard there, if you look at the root word there, it means mount up a garrison. A garrison. Mount up a garrison. A whole, you know what a garrison is? Like a whole battalion of the military. Put them around you. Because out of there flows the issues of life. Don't allow those things in your spirit. Don't allow them. The last thing I want to say is that play your role faithfully. And let every other person play their role. Don't interfere with the role of each other. Don't interfere with it. You do what you got to do, okay? And let those other people do what they got to do. You don't have to agree. For as so long as a child of God, do what the word of God tells you. Let those that are not of the, of the kingdom of God do what they're supposed to do. This happened in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. The three Hebrew boys, they did something. They told Nebuchadnezzar, we will not be careful to answer you on this matter. They told Nebuchadnezzar, do what you got to do. Do it. And Nebuchadnezzar said, yes, I will do it. He multiplied the furnace, the fire, seven times. I will do it. And he did it. And the guys were bound and thrown into the fiery furnace. But the fourth man stepped in. Praise the Lord. He stepped in. And he did what he was meant to do. He did what he is always an expert of doing to redeem you. Praise the Lord. You are not helpless, child of God. We are not helpless. We have help all the time. The question is, will you take a stand? If you take a stand, your redeemer is faithful. Your redeemer will fight for you. He will defend you. He will step in when you need him. He will step in and rescue you from every calamity in the name of Jesus. You are here, you are struggling for your children, wondering what happened to my children. I raised them in the ways of the Lord. Listen, I have good news for you. Your children will come back. All is not lost, child of God. You do what you got to do. God is doing his work. Play your role, child of God. Play your role. The Bible says he will never put to shame them that trust in him. God will not ashamed you because of your children. He will not ashamed you. He will not let you be ashamed because of what is happening to your family. No way. He's coming for you. He's coming for them. He's coming to fight for you. In the name of Jesus. You have help. You have help all the time. Take a stand. Take a stand. Take a stand. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Take a stand. We are living in a world where Christians have become fearful. That you can't even tell someone about Jesus anymore. That if you are a practicing doctor, somebody comes for abortion, you tell them no. Pro-life guys, or pro-life or pro-choice, those kind of guys, you know those things. That you cannot say no. If you say no because of you are taking a stand, they will take you to jail. So what? Or if you are a minister, there are fellows who want to get married. James and James. They want to get married. So if you are James, say, don't worry, please. It just came. It's not about you. But if you say no, if you say no, if you say no, they will take you to jail. That if you're a photographer, <laughs> and those guys approach you, hey man, we are having a wedding. Eh? Steve and Steve. And you know what? 
You know what? That if you say no, they will take you to jail. So what? That if you're a person who is doing flowers or making cakes, if they come to you, oteno and oteno, if you say no, they will take you to jail. So what? Child of God, we are living in times of power. We are living in times of power. The church of Jesus will never lose. The church of Jesus reigns forever. And Jesus is counting on you to take a stand. Take that stand. Greater miracles are about to happen in this world than before. Greater, greater miracles. God fighting for his people. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid to go to jail. Don't be afraid to be arrested. Stand for something. Stand for something greater. Something higher, much higher than life. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you, child of the church in America. Take a stand. You are the leaders, man. You are the leaders, man. You are the leaders in many things. Do not lead us in fear. Lead us in confidence. The Bible says, cast not away your confidence because it is the greater reward. It shall be rewarded. Praise the Lord. You people are leading this world. Take a stand. It is coming to Kenya. It's coming to Africa. It's coming to Tanzania. But we want to see what you people will do. Hallelujah. What are you guys going to do? Ah, take a stand. Let the church say, if you can be seated just for a few minutes, I know we've gone way over our time, but if you'll bow your heads, I want to give that person or person the opportunity to surrender his or her life to Christ. I know the altar call was made at the beginning, but there may be someone here today, you say, Pastor, I need to be saved, or Pastor, I need to de rededicate my life to Christ. I don't want to ever dismiss the service without giving people that opportunity. If you're here, this is, not a, this is not a call to become a member of this church. This is a call for you to surrender your life to Christ. Right where you are, just lift those hands high. Pastor, you're talking to me. I need to surrender my life to Christ. There's someone here today that the Spirit of God's been dealing with you, and today is the day. The Bible says that the day that you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. So that man or woman, that boy or girl, you're here and you say, Pastor, I need to surrender my life to Christ. Or, Pastor, I need to rededicate my life quickly. Just lift those hands high all over this building. Hands ought to be going up. You're talking to me. More importantly, is the Holy Spirit talking to you? <clears throat> well, let the church say. Quickly turn to your neighbor and say, is he talking to you? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Of course. Now, don't forget, our sister will be out front. Now, please, um, brothers, if you would help us with the chairs again, quickly. We do this every week. Um, turn to your neighbor. Find a This is a quick one. You got to get a quick prayer request very quickly. Do it quick. Do it quick. Yeah, short, do the shorthand version. All right, all right. That's, that's, I told you it was going to be quick. Come on, let me have your eyes and ears. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Now, your assignment this week. Now, some of y'all still talking. I said quick. You don't know how to give a quick prayer request? Um, your assignment this week is to pray over that situation, that circumstance, what they share with you. That is your assignment this week. Secondly, quickly, this got to be done quickly too. That, the persons that are here and you say, Pastor, I want to become a member of Love and Faith, quickly step out, come down. We'll be glad to receive you. Of course, one of the joys that we get, number one, is people being saved. Secondly, when people come to become part of this family, so quickly step out and come down. We'll be glad to receive you. All right, we're going to pray in a course. Oh, come on down. Come on, come on. Yeah. God bless you. Good to have you. God bless you. Anybody else? Come on down. Come on down. We'll be glad to have you. Just let me know you're coming. Wave your hand. All right. 
two questions, and the question to this is yes. Our sister right here is going to take you and share some information. Number one, uh, do you believe that the Bible is the Word of God? Secondly, do you promise to abide by the bylaws of love and faith as long as they're within the guidelines of the Word of God? Welcome to love and faith. You go with that young lady right there. Again, God bless you. Um, brothers, if you can help us to put the chairs up, we really would appreciate it. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for what you have spoken to us this weekend. I pray, dear Lord, as we leave this place, but not your presence, that you will continue to show yourself strong and mighty on our behalf. Help us to be that church in our community, in our workforce, wherever we go. Help us to be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, I pray again that your face will shine upon us. Be gracious to us and may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may the love of God, may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us from henceforth, now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let everybody agree with that prayer. Say amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Brothers, help us with